What up? It's Golden Spaces, an Odyssey original podcast. And even though the dubs took an L tonight to the uh, reigning champ, Denver Nuggets, um, we're going to try to be positive, but we are going to still break down this game and talk about it because in the grand scheme of things, it is a big opportunity, not because I care so much about, oh, they beat the champs and blah, 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 all that shit, but like all the teams we needed to lose tonight lost. So it was a chance to like take a step up in the standings. To me, that was the bigger L, you know, Dallas lost, uh, the Lakers lost, um, I think there was one more loss. And then, you know, right now, if the Kings end up losing, I don't know if they will, because I don't think Paul George is playing. But, like, it just could have been a move for them in the standings, you know? So they really just don't gain or lose. They still have one less loss than the Lakers. Um, But, you know, it would have been nice to capitalize on that. I'm sure there will be all kinds of stories and things people say. But, like, I don't feel the Warriors are a team that – needs to beat Denver to have the confidence to think they can do it. Like these guys are multiple time championship, multiple time champions. So I'm not worried about that. And they already know that they let one game more than one game get away from them. Um, It's hard. Like Denver kind of took control of this game and the Warriors didn't get it back. Um, And I think the opportunities, we can talk about that, but I think the opportunities they had to get back in the game, they were wasted with like bad rotations and, and stuff like that. But, you know, the last game, they should have won. Hands down, we all know that they should have won that game. Jokic winning on, like, that three-point shot was crazy. Um, First game, they were down bodies and still kept it close in Denver. So um, I think they have the ability to compete with Denver, but they definitely have to play their A game. They can't have 16 turnovers. So we should talk about it. And I said that it hits golden spaces, but I did not say, even though you guys should know, it's me, your girl, Nat. It is Justin and it is Karima. So guys, let's get into it. Let's get into this game today. I feel like a lot of Warriors fans obviously would have just loved for us to win sort of like a get back to Denver. Um but whatever, it didn't happen. They'll see Denver one more time this season. Is that correct? No, that's it. Oh, for four swept. Oh, they played four times this season. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize three games already happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, so that's fine. It's fine in that, like, if they end up seeing each other later in the postseason, their fans will be really cocky thinking they swept the Warriors. So there's no chance for the Warriors to win. So. Whatever it is. Like, I mean, I just, I don't care about that. Um, But I do care about how Steve Kerr, the highest paid coach in the NBA now, is um, handling these uh, rotations. Have you guys had a podcast since he got that contract? No, he he signed it after. Yeah, Charlotte, Charlotte game. All right, we can talk about that potentially a little bit later. But um, so, Justin, let me ask a question. Because um, I thought Andy brought up a good point, not Andy, Sam from um, Light Years brought up a great point about Draymond on um, a tweet. And he said the issue with Draymond playing at the five versus a team like Denver is that he can't help. Um, what do you think about that? I agree. I agree. When I uh, initially projected how the Warriors match up with the Nuggets, I had Looney being the five. Looney being the five and being a much better version of what he's been this season. Now, is that earlier in the year you're saying, or you're saying like even heading into this? In the off season, like in the off Off season, season. when I was like, this is how they match up for them. Um, Yeah, it was with Looney in mind because he can just you know at least be a body on Jokic while Draymond can kind of take away that Aaron Gordon slip to the rim and help and, you know, provide all of that stuff that he does off the ball. So, so they, they obviously Luna is what he is. I don't really think he's getting much better. Right. But are they still better off letting Loon in this matchup just start at the five anyway? So Dre can still, you know, start at the four or, is it someone else or is it they need to get out of Porter on this team really quickly? <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it? 
I think their best path is for guys like JK to not necessarily turn into Draymond, but like be a little bit more active as a help side defender. Don't let Aaron Gordon just get offensive rebounds. You know, I mean, that'll help a lot because, I mean, Dre can do a decent job on Jokic one on one, but like nobody's really stopping him one on one. And and the game plan against Denver anyway is to like, okay, let Jokic try to score because if we limit everybody else, then they become a little bit easier to guard. Right, but that's so, why I'm wondering: does it make sense for him to even then start at the five? Because no one's really going to contain him or do anything. So can't you still just have Loon do that? Yeah, I mean, they're I mean, probably their original starting five would be the best starting five, like stylistically, to play against Denver. But I don't know about Loon at this point <laughs> doing that. So you guys, you got to just stick with the stick with what you got going right now. But I thought Loon actually didn't play horribly this game. I mean, he, he was still working well on the boards and he was doing everything he could on Jokic to, you know, cause some resistance. So I think perhaps that's what I'm saying. They started out with that, yeah. just kind of let's just see what it looks like to because. Because I don't necessarily think that Draymond's doing a better job, is what I'm saying. Like, even if Draymond is the better defender. So it's just like, Mm -hmm. I feel like you might as well just put Draymond in a position where he helps the team more and just, you know, see if you can get some productive minutes out of Loon. Yeah, I'm thinking more so offensively how much that'll affect things. Because we already saw, like, Steph... Is just seeing a lot of attention, right? KCP is one of the better staff defenders in the league anyway. And then they just, their whole game plan is like, we're going to sag off of literally everybody else in this lineup because we don't right. care about them shooting. So, so. let's talk about that. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think that like the goal should be like to get Steph going early in these games versus um, not. Mm-hmm. And it's like well, for every matchup, Every matchup, it's like they're like, we're going to just make sure we defend Steph and let all these other guys beat us, right? Mm -hmm. And it hasn't worked now in four matchups. So why is that still the game plan? Why has that game plan not been adjusted? You mean for Denver specifically or just in general? Yeah, I think earlier in the season, no Draymond. I mean, this is the first time Draymond played against Denver. So like him not being there – but do you really think that forward. was going to make a big difference? Yeah, I think just from a well, ball movement and screening <laughs> standpoint, he he does help because a lot of times in the in the first three matchups they would just blitz Steph and he. But I mean, like, in terms of Steph, because it didn't help him tonight. No, didn't Steph didn't because, help his. He was yeah. missing shots that he he had good good looks. And good also, course. like they're just playing too many non spacers with Steph at this point. I mean, like you, people can follow me on Twitter or whatever, but like. Pod starting does mean it's less spacing. I mean, that's just very obvious compared to Clay. But, like, teams are noticing that, and they're just like, well, we're just going to load up Steph. And before, when that lineup was doing great, I was pointing out teams they were doing it against weren't that good. Now they're playing against teams with more size and more defense. Now it's like it, it, teams are just loading up on Steph, and there's not a lot of outlets in terms of scoring that can relieve the pressure off of him. So. I feel like for 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 Denver, I feel like because I get it. I mean, listen, I don't think I'm not one of the people who are like Jokic just can't defend at all. But I feel like they play into Denver's game plan. I think they take way too many like threes and like outside shots. And I feel like you could attack a little bit more, you mm-hmm. know, um, and that might open up things a little bit early. Um, for Steph. The other thing I think is um, Kaminga. I think they need to like utilize him more earlier. So like at the end of the game, like it didn't matter because they weren't like they weren't going to come back from a 10 point lead because they can't get fucking stops. Right. But like <laughs> he he kept attacking and it was an and one or it was a foul every time. Right. And so what I'm saying is, like, use that earlier in the fucking game. Star Clay. <laughs> <laughs> you, but and you can use that earlier in the game, right? Like, uh, I, I I see what you're saying. 
But like you need clay out there. That's fine. You need clay out there for that to happen. That's but what I'm I mean. Just saying, do that more and take advantage of that because mm-hmm. right, it wasn't it the Denver game where he sat and they came back and we had this whole right. It's like why is it less Kaminga and more Pajimski? I don't understand. It's less and I'm not, and like Pajimski. I think Pajimski <laughs> is going to be so. He is already so valuable to this team. But Mm -hmm. versus Denver, clearly you need more Kaminga. And you also need more GP2. Yeah. You need less Brandon. That's just what this matchup calls for. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that he won't help against other teams and stuff like this, but it's just less Brandon. And I don't get it because I'm just like every drive he's fouled. I mean, he's not the only one, but he's the only one they fucking call it for. Mm -hmm. JK, you mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's that's how Curry got it going in in the second half, getting him. He was driving to the rim, driving to the rim, and that's where he started to get his points and started the juices flowing for him. So it was there. I feel like it's like, I feel like they act like it's Anthony Davis there, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Make Jokic work. You're right. Just get to the cup. Make them work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, in general, just like just basic basketball, you need more space to get to the cup. But that just the mentality of like going, like, we're just going to attack. I'm not going to let him, you know, string my dribble out and I pass it to somebody for a roll or something like that. I'm just going to attack his hip and make him move his feet and get to the basket. Like, And it'll you know, tire him out. If nothing else, right. it'll tire him out. Mm-hmm. Then the shots don't fall later in the game. Then mm-hmm. things don't happen. Like, I just don't understand. And for the love of God, please, with these fucking passes, all of them. Like, and Dre is, how many, six tonight turnovers? Six. Six out like, of the no. 17 that we had. It was just like, what are you doing? Because they're forcing him to be a scorer. And he's just like, I got to hit the roller. I got to hit the dunker spot guy. He tried to force that pass at the end of the game to GP2. Clearly wasn't there. Even if it got through, GP2 it, surrounded it, by two seven-footers. Like, what right, are you that's doing? That's what I tweeted. I said, what was GP2 going to do anyway if right. he got that ball? Just like, score. why are you doing that? Yeah. Just just score, Draymond. Just, like, <laughs> shoot a floater or something. I mean, he missed one of the shook. That's what I understand. Like, it's like. You can't talk all the shit you do and get on podcasts the way you do and then show up like this. Mm-hmm. That's the shit that annoys me. You cannot do that. Because this is what I'm saying. You, you are doing this for Steph to cash the checks. This is what you do. Yes. And I'm not saying he's not important. And I'm not saying that he's not needed. But I'm saying, bro, like, the game plan called for you to be a little bit more aggressive and try to score. Mm-hmm. And instead, you're doing all of these dumb ass passes. Yeah. And it's all of them, but it's just like, what? why do you guys think it's going to work? Okay, turnover, turnover, <laughs> turnover. And you just keep doing it throughout the game. I mean... Well, Lester it's, it's, had one that drove me crazy at one point. Like, it's just like, why did you think that that was a smart pass? To Curry in the corner. Yeah. When <laughs> the defender was literally right there, telegraphed pass. Right. Yeah. <sighs> they just need, they, they, I mean, they play a ton of guys who are the connector guys, which that's great. But to a certain extent, it's like, bro, y'all got to score the ball or shoot the ball. You need people that's willing to shoot the ball and score the ball. And Just they're as simple way as that. too reliant on outside shooting when they play Denver. I don't – I know that Denver has more length. I know they do. But I just – I do not feel like you cannot score on Aaron Gordon. Like, I do not feel like you cannot score a bucket on Jokic. Like, they're just not that kind of defensive team to me. They do a decent job of, like, just loading up at the rim. Like, they don't have, like, a ton of rim protection, but they just have, like, a a bunch of bodies there. Mm -hmm. And they're big bodies. So just 
people just probably see it and they're like, well, it's no point in me just trying to like score over all of these guys, which is why you need more space. Like Moses is another guy who can space the floor, right? Even if he isn't shooting the ball as, as good as he was earlier in the season, he's still a guy that's on the scouting report as someone who can knock down an open three. So putting making Denver guard you in space is how you score on them consistently. If you just allow yeah, them to better. bump you into mid ranges and th- and contested threes because you're you can't get anywhere in the paint because nobody's scared of the shooter in the corner over there, you're gonna have a hard time scoring. Like unless you're just blazing hot from three, like Clay was earlier in the game. Right, and, and I was just that about cooled to off to that. Not sustainable. Right, you yeah. cannot rely on that. Right. And like in none of these games, Steph has not been able to get going, which is why I'm saying their game plan has to be getting Steph going. Because mm-hmm. like, yeah, he was finding some ways to score and do stuff, but he's not in rhythm by that point. Mm-hmm. He's not in rhythm. And then it's harder. That's facts. You know, That's Clay is like, Clay is going off and I'm just like, great. So everything feels good. But then... For one, you ice Clay on some level. So you, you ice him. Right. But then after that, like, okay, fine. You watch, what was it, 14-point lead dwindle? Was, was, was there a timeout? Was there a what Did anything happen during right. that 14-0? I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I don't think there was. I just remember watching. I think there might have been. I think there mm-hmm. might have been, but then still when they came out of it, they just they just couldn't do anything. The game they plan could not change. get a stop. They couldn't get a stop. They couldn't score. But they also and this didn't is score. with the starters. So right, but the game plan didn't change because you're still trying to score in the same way. Mm-hmm. And I think at one point, wasn't it taking um Kaminga out and putting in clay versus taking pods out and putting in clay? Yeah, Clay didn't come in until it was like late. a minute. It right. was a minute left to go. And at that point, it's like, well, we're already tied up at the basically. Right. So. Yep. I don't know, Steve. I mean, like it's it's funny because we were lobbying for other young players to get minutes. And like Steve is just like, we're just gonna give pods all the minutes. And it's like this is not an anti-pods. Podcast. This is obviously we we love pods here, but it's like there's a certain level of like reliance you should have on him, and you should understand his strengths and weaknesses. Like again, against a team like Denver, who has a ton of size <clears throat> and skill with that size, you just can't out hustle that. Like you just can't out goon that, right? Like you have to certain you have to have a certain level of size and athleticism yourself. Like, why is he checking Michael Porter Jr.? Like, Michael Porter Jr. didn't really go off today because Jamal Murray and Jokic were just cooking the whole time. But, like, if that's the type of defensive assignment you're giving out to him, it's like, come on, man. What is he really supposed to do there? Right. And by the way, like, because, I mean, he's just going to keep doing it. He's not going to stop it. But then take away Dario's minutes and give those to Moody. Like, there's (laughs) no reason for Dario to see the floor. None. None. Especially in this matchup. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I really don't want to see Dario there, at all anymore. Yeah, like, there's, no reason not, for him, yeah. there's no reason for him yeah. to play unless Chris Paul is playing, apparently. Because when Chris Paul yeah. is playing, he was hooping. Chris Paul ain't there. It, it's kind of done. So, <laughs> obviously, Chris Paul is coming back. So, maybe he'll look better when that when that happens. But there's no reason Which for worries him to me because I don't want that to cut down on Trace's minutes. Like, Trace needs minutes. And I still think in the minutes he played, like, yes, we said earlier that Loon wasn't bad, but I still thought Trace was better. Yeah. Now, granted, I mean, I Trace is playing that, against but... like Zeke Naji and stuff like right. that. But I do think Trace at this point is just like a more reliable, just probably just a better player right now. Like, he can do more things for your team. So, But he gives you a better chance. Like, he's yeah. more athletic. He, you know, I mean, obviously, it is what it is. I guess I can't expect too much from him. But, like, even when he's going up there, he's getting fouled. They're sending him to the free throw line. Granted, he's only a 60% shooter, but it's like he has good hands. He's athletic. He's at least trying to grab some boards. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like he's athletic. It's like sometimes I feel like nowadays with Looney and definitely, like, Andrew – 
um, it's like they grab the board and then they just let it get taken away from them. It's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you doing? You grab the board, hold on to it. Yeah. That shit irks me. It irks me more yeah. than anything when they grab a board and then they just let it get yeah, taken away. Let someone take it from them. Yep. It so annoying. It's also it's like the NBA, bro. Like, you know, everybody's grabbing boards and going for the ball as soon as you grab it. It's the NBA. Like, everybody swipes up at the ball. Yeah, like, just hold on to the ball. Like, rip it away. It was one play. Gary got the rebound, and he immediately put the ball behind his head like this so they couldn't smack it. It's like, why aren't people just doing that, like, type of stuff? I don't get it. And this team, they're going to, like, swipe at things. They're going to play the passing lanes. They're like, they have the length to do it. And so it was like, it was another time in traffic when like Lester was trying to drive. They just like knocked it out. Like, yeah, it's the little things. I mean, when you're playing against a team like this, you got to win in all those little areas like that. And they just got to When you're playing a team like this, you got to just play your best players. Like, you don't like this to me was not a game for you to go deep into the bench. No. Nah. But I don't think he's decided who his best players are. And that's the problem. Although we all know. Yeah. I mean, we know who the best players are. The best players, some of them, well, one of them just hasn't been available all right. season up until recently. And a, a couple of the other ones just haven't been playing their best. But you Chris still Paul know that. Chris is the only player, player right now who's one of your top nine who isn't available. Right. 14 minutes for Gary Payton the second. What are we doing? Exactly. Like this game did not need to see Dario. Minutes. It did not need to see Dario. I understand maybe why in this matchup you play Luna a bit a bit a little bit, but it didn't need to see Dario. Mm-hmm. Pods could have seen less minutes. It should have seen Moody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the bench. I mean, the whole... best eight players don't include Loon. It doesn't. So it's 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 eight, like right now because Chris is in here, but mm-hmm. it's like it's your starting five, and I'm I know Clay isn't starting right now, but it's your starting five if JK's in it, and then it's like Chris, Pods, GP two, um, and Trace, and those are your nine, those are your nine, and then to me Moody should be there. Mm-hmm. And it would be 10. Like, to me, those are, like, your 10 best players. But Moody just doesn't get the burn. And then, right. like, you use Loon sparingly. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Too much. Lester. Lester, 14 minutes. Yeah, Lester way too much be Lester. You shouldn't Lester be Lester should not have a place in the rotation. Let You gave Lester a contract. Lester should be cheering people on from the bench. Yeah. And he's not necessarily even playing bad. It's just like there's certain things he just can't do on the court that you need against a team like this. You need more And it's not impactful enough what he does do. Like, even though he's not playing bad, he's not impacting the game enough that he should get the minutes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I feel like every time Moody comes on the court, he's being impactful. Absolutely. At the bare minimum, he's playing impactful defense exactly and that's why i said earlier like i don't even care right now about his shooting like you get more length and you get defense you get more fast breaks because you will get a steal or two you're going to get all you're going to get a putback at some point he's going to crash the offensive glass there's just certain things that he's just going to bring at a baseline that help your team a ton but courage just don't rock with the man i don't know yeah i don't know one of the episodes we've done recently I can't remember if it was a win or a loss. I don't know. They didn't appreciate how much we were talking about Moody. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to stop talking what? about Moody. Yeah, no, they were just like. How can you not appreciate Moody? I think it was a win. And so they were saying, like, what are we complaining about? It's a win. Like, he got the win. And you see the other day, too, someone tried to say to me on the timeline, there's a reason Moody's not playing. Can you stop? No, I won't fucking stop. Let me tell you, the, a way to get what very the oh, blocked the by me, <laughs> do not come in my mentions telling me how to tweet from my fucking account, okay? Exactly. Like, what are you doing, B? Like, <laughs> Twitter etiquette. Stop telling people what to tweet from their page. Stop talking crazy to people, like strangers. 
stop being condescending to people like you're smarter than somebody else and then you should be fine you won't get the block button but if you do any of those three things i'm probably going to block you immediately right and look i'm not going to sit up here and say that i'm not guilty of some of those things but like (laughs) i just i just don't know if you've seen me enough on the timeline now i don't know what possesses anyone to think that you would ever be able to tell me what to tweet (laughs) from my account why do you think that's something that would ever go over well i just don't understand right no i'm not gonna stop talking about moody i'm not instagram was really funny with uh with kerr's contract because i thought it was just twitter who thinks he's fraudulent but because you know sometimes like nba instagram is very different than like nba twitter yeah (laughs) (laughs) they're like steph curry can get anybody paid And someone's like, I don't know why y'all are acting like this. He built a dynasty. And people are like, what? <laughs> they started like, it was just crazy. But, you know, whatever. A little bit later still for Kerr's contract. But, like, these are the things that I worry about, honestly, with him. I mean, like, everyone tries to act like it's not a big deal and all that he's done. But I don't think he still knows how to adjust for these younger guys. And... They are a part of, like, you guys still being a good team. Like, you need them. Mm -hmm. This is not even a whole, um, you know, they're not ready. They're not this. We have too many young players. Lord. Curry had three rough shooting nights out of the past four. That's all true. That's all true. But I don't give a shit about that because he's had rough shooting every game versus Denver. Every game. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, like people were missing in every game, so he still could have been tired. But at some point, you got to be like, our game plan is not good. Yeah. And what, what game are you going to rest him for? You're not set up to do that. That's part of the problem. Like, we just came off an of all-star break, bro. He look, Right. That's what I'm – he looks fatigued. All, they, <laughs> well, all-star break for him wasn't a true break. I'm just saying. I mean, come on. He, he had a lot of stuff NBA that he games. was doing. He didn't do that much in the game. He did one round with Sabrina. Like, all the press. All the press. Okay, like, please miss me. <laughs> miss me. I ain't trying to hear all that. I mean, come on. Let's look at their schedule. Let's look at their schedule. They have, I mean, if you're going to rest them, rest them versus Washington. I don't try to be funny, but that's their next game. Rest him mm-hmm. versus Washington. Don't yeah. let him play that first game. Y'all can maybe beat Washington without him. They definitely can. Yeah, that would be perfect. Because after that, you have the Knicks, and they are yeah. a they and are the Knicks team, though. But still, you, but you still. will them. probably. Yeah. No, you will. Mm-hmm. Toronto? Can they beat Toronto without him? It's I'm the Wizards sure. game. It's the Wizards game. That's because it. if you if you rest him versus Washington, you get three nights off before you play New York. That's the game. Yep. Maybe a yeah. good thing you won't be at that game anyway, Justin, because that would have sucked for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's all good though. If there, if I mean, if that if rest is what they're leaning to. Yeah. So. Because you got New York. The only other game in there that is like is Toronto because you're not resting him versus Boston. Mm-hmm. So it's got to be the Wizards game. Yeah. We'll see. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's not like that big of a deal because all the other teams lost tonight. So it's just sort of like you remain in place. But um, 
I just, I don't, you know, and I feel like it's honestly gaslighting us and arrogance to sit up there and say, yeah, it's come together now with Moody and this is how it normally goes. And you're playing, not Moody, Kaminga, you're playing Kaminga now because my guy went to the press and the mm -hmm. owner was mad. Mm -hmm. And this is also my issue with his contract being done now versus at the end of the season. Because even if you were always going to sign him, I feel like now you're locked up two years. So you're like, okay, I'm going to just do, you know what I mean? What I want. And, you know, like, I mean, you, you're going to go like on the record and say, yeah, I played Anthony Lamb last year because he was a better player than Kaminga. There's no time in life Anthony Lamb has been a better player than Jonathan Kaminga. Yeah, that was crazy. That's a wild statement to make. You don't think that's a crazy statement to make? No, it is. It's also just unnecessary. But that's him being arrogant. That's him being arrogant. That's what that is. Yeah, I see it. I see that's it. just right. that's all that is. That's like I was right. And that's <laughs> the thing. I don't like to be gaslighted. And this is when you gotta pay attention because pe people who just look at results will say, Oh, he's right. And that's already what started to happen. They started mm -hmm. to win again, and people were like, Oh, yeah, everything he was doing was correct. No, the fuck it wasn't. <laughs> And the reason Jonathan Kaminga is playing is not because of what Steve Kerr did. It's because Joe Lacob went down there. <laughs> sat in the press conference. Sat in the press conference. And some things changed. <laughs> and people like tried to get on Kaminga because that first game, he ain't play like that. And then after that one first game, and even then, I didn't see what the big deal was. Like, yeah, he didn't have like a great scoring night, but he wasn't even bad the way people were acting. And then after that, he went crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what happened. This was not no master plan and he finally got it. He could always do that. And he could have done more last year. But Anthony Lamb was a better player. Anthony Lamb is not even a better player than Moses Moody. What are right. we doing? Right. What are we doing? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, Kareem? I mean, I'm rude. not. I, I think it's funny. Which part? It was funny. No, that Lamb's not a better, you know, player than Moody. Just how you said that. No, I agree. But, I mean, He's that's not. arrogance. That's arrogance. That's him being like, how dare you question what I do? I think, I mean, a lot of the stuff he's doing now is kind of like, I don't know. It's almost like he's just grasping at certain things. Like obviously, Draymond came back. They made the the, the switch to Wiggins, Kaminga, Draymond is their, their core front court going forward. It's obviously worked. We already knew that that was going to be their highest ceiling front court. So it's not like that was just some revelation thing that he found. No, it wasn't. Um, well, it wasn't like Wiggins was putting up how he should have been. Yeah. So once Draymond was inserted, then okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now it's just yeah, even with that, like again, I don't want to take away from Draymond, but it's like there were positive versions of that lineup before. He just refused to play them. Right. It may have not been as impactful, and there were not many, but because I remember we talked about it on here. It was just like it does work if you have pods in there. Right. Now maybe it wouldn't have been against the best teams, but it did because he's a connector, not as great as Draymond, but he is. But he sort of had it in his mind. He didn't want to play those two together. And we were still in the, well, we play Kaminga, we don't. It was like that period, right? So even then, I mean, you can go back and you can pull and see that the, the few times the lineup even was positive before in the past, he was in it. So it's like there are times they see data and things that work and they still just don't do it. Well, right, the like, data was not showing that those two together without Draymond was a positive. No, it, it did show not. that if Pods was there. Yes, it did. It did. Okay, if Pods was there, but but, but that's my early point. on. But early it on, it wasn't cooking. Right, it wasn't. But I'm just saying, like there was a version of it that did work, and even then, he didn't do it because it was more like. Mm, it was two things. One, it was just like, okay, this lineup doesn't work, but it wasn't working most of the ways you were playing it because it required 
a connector. And secondly, it was also his whole thing with Kaminga, right? It's just like, I don't know if he should be playing this much, right? So it wasn't just him looking because there was a positive version of it and you still weren't doing it. And it made no sense to any of us because we were like, you need your wings. You need those guys to play. So the focus should have been on figuring out how to get that lineup to work. And instead it was just like, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the way you're playing, it doesn't work. And that's when he was still insistent on, I have to give Looney minutes. I have to give Wiggins minutes. I have to write. A lot of it was based on him just feeling the need to give players minutes, even though they weren't necessarily playing well and it wasn't working. That's more my point. I'm going to play Chris Paul more now because Draymond's out and I got to play a vet, right? And so that's what I'm saying. It's like everyone keeps saying, like, it didn't work. It didn't most of the time, but it did work with Pops. And he just didn't do it. And so that's why I'm saying, like, again, I'm not trying to take away from Draymond because he does help. And I think that's why he leans into that lineup more when it's Dre and Pods out there. But, you know, like, the lineup is still good if Clay is in there. The lineup is still good if you know, someone else is in there. GP2 even. Like, the lineup is going to work with different players in it because there are, four, there are four main guys that need to be on the court or on the court. Yeah. And that's Dre, Staff, Kaminga, and Wiggs. Mm -hmm. I think their rating when it's like the four of them is like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the sample has to grow. But I mean, it's obviously it's going to be their best chance at anything anyway. So you got to lean into that. Um, so but. when should they use which player? Right. We have those four. Right. So I know as a general matter, you think it should just be clay. But if it's not going to be clay, when does it make sense to use pods? When does it make sense to use GP2? Is there anyone else that it makes sense to insert with those four? Um. I don't think GP2 there makes a ton of sense because of the spacing issues. Um, he's even less of a spacer than Pods is, so it just doesn't make a ton of sense. Now, if you just want to be like, we're just going to put our best possible defensive lineup around Steph, <laughs> like, then that's your lineup right there. But <laughs> other, otherwise, I wouldn't do that. Um, Pods there in, instead of Clay, it makes sense when you really want to get Steph, like, cooking, like, we're going to get Steph any shot that he wants every time down. If he wants to shoot it, he's going to shoot. I and think can you explain Clay, why that is, though? I mean, I think when Clay's out there, Steph feels like – I wouldn't say he feels the need, but he's like, okay, I'm going to share the wealth a little bit and get Clay some shots and whatever the case may be, which is really on him. I don't think Clay would really care if Steph went and shot it every single time. But I think Steph is just like, well, Clay's out here, so let's run some plays for Clay and stuff like that. So it kind of diminishes, like – Steph in a sense. And when Clay's not out there, he's just like, okay, I got to go supernova. So a lot of it is a lot of the recent play where he's been hitting all these threes in the game has been with that lineup because they all just pass the Steph. Like Paz just wants to pass the Steph. Draymond just wants to pass the Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Coming and Wiggins just like, well, if I get an open shot, I'll take it. Or if I got an open layup, I'll take it. But in general, I'm just, I'm not going to like hijack anything. So it's just Steph, Steph, Steph. That's that's when you really want to use that lineup, in my opinion. If you want like some short burst of like high usage Steph going crazy, you go, you put pods in there. But now you feel like it opens up things more for Kaminga and I assume Andrew as well with Clay in there. Oh, for sure. Well, I think not necessarily Andrew. I think Andrew gets the same quality of shots regardless because he's always just like the outlet guy, they don't really run a lot of actions for him, that type of thing. And he gets guarded general, generally, like, close by defenses. Like, it's not like Kaminga where they just kind of, like, ignore him on the three-point line. They still guard Wiggins on the three-point line a little bit. So he's pretty standard. But Kaminga's – you can just look at it on the court and see the difference. Like, when Steph and Claire are on the court, Kaminga's at the rim one-on-one -on -one, consistently. Like, guys just don't help. When Clay ain't out there – you got Kaminga trying to go one on one with Aaron Gordon, right? And it's not like, effective. I'm older than you, stronger than you. I know all your moves, like, and I got help with me. You're not gonna score me, right? So, yeah, I think, I mean, and the numbers support it. Kaminga's efficiency jumps crazy when Clay's on the court with him versus when he's not on the court with him. Um, the eye test and the stats support it. I don't know why Steve said that stuff about like 
it, it makes more sense for Wiggins and Kamanga when Paz is in there when that's just like not the truth at all. But yeah. I think because that there were some versions, there were some numbers, right? Like for those lineups that showed that. But mm -hmm. we've talked about it. It's a small sample. We've talked about it. It's against, you know, as you noted earlier, teams that are not as good, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing that it doesn't work as well. So what does that mean then for the Trace Clay connection? Because I think ultimately Clay is going to come back to starting. I do. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately he's going to be back there. I don't know when Kerr is going to make that decision. I don't need, first of all, assuming they make the playoffs. I don't know if this is going to be a late playoff thing where finally he's like Eureka or an assistant says to him, why don't you move Clay into the starting lineup? You know, the, the infamous thing that was done with, with Andre, you know, that he didn't realize, mm -hmm. like, just pay, just play your five best players and mm -hmm. you probably win. Right. And so it's still clay. Right. And so, but I, I just feel like he realizes that before that, hopefully mm -hmm. I'm hoping. Um, and because clay is a vet and, you know, like, I feel like he'll, it'll be easier for him to get there than if it was like someone else. But if 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 Clay goes back into the starting lineup, right, and so there's less bench time, what does that mean for him and Trace? Or is that now someone else? Is that because like Chris Paul's back, so it doesn't matter? What does that mean? I think it's, it could still thrive. I think before he was fully put on the bench, he was still running the bench units. Like they would take him out early for pods. Four or five minutes to the game, he would be the first sub out of the starters. Um, kind of how they're doing it now, whereas like he and Gary come in for pods and whoever. Um, they could just flip that and be like, okay, you're still going to run the bench unit anyway. So I think he can still be there. It's just up to Steve to actually play Trace the amount of minutes he should be playing them and playing him with Clay for it to for it to work. What should the minutes distribution be? What should it be? In terms of which position, like everybody, yeah. Um, just the players I, we know should be playing because Dario shouldn't be playing. We know that, right? Uh, Lester shouldn't be playing. So, in theory, if we were playing the guys that should be playing, what should the minutes distribution be? And include Chris Paul in that. Okay, uh, I'll pull it up. Of course, I've written it down. <laughs> You've written it down before. Of course. He's been over I have like this. a bunch of stuff yeah. in my notes on this team, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I would play Steph at least 32, like baseline 32 minutes. Um, I would play CP3 the remaining point guard minutes, so that's 16 for him. Clay, so you don't Wiggins. even think we need CP 20 minutes tonight? No, we don't, we really don't. Um, Clay Wiggins and Kaminga will all start at 28 minutes and they can go up or down depending on how they're playing. Pods 25 minutes go up or down. Uh GP2 15. Um Draymond 32. And just like Steph. Split between the four and the five. 24 at, at the five and about like eight or so at the four. You can play him with Trace for those minutes or you know, whoever. And I'll play Trace like at least 18. 18 to 20 minutes, and then the rest of the minutes just go to um, did I say Gary? You just say yeah. Gary, like Gary, like 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah, and that would that would leave Moody with like 12 or so minutes, like one rotation per half. Like, you don't got to play him a ton, just play him a quick four or five minute stint in the second quarter, and then some point in the third quarter, if you don't want to play him in the fourth, you know what I mean, and just let him get some, some run because I'm sure he can come in and make a quick impact and just go right back to the bench and be, be satisfied. And it's going to be more impactful than whatever 12, 13, 14 minutes you're going to get from any of Dario, Lester, or Loon at this point. So yeah, that's what I would I would be. So that, that is 10. You did say uh, the same 10 players, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Karima, do you think they should go after Otto Park Porter? Otto Pata? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could use him. Uh, providing, you know, he's still able to walk and uh, you know, shoot the ball. The reports are, and I mean, of course, this yeah. is obviously coming from his camp, but the the reports are that he's healthy, he's in great condition, and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, he sure wasn't playing in Toronto. I know that he got hurt out there, too. 
quick. Right. He was hurt. I mean, he hasn't been playing because he's been hurt. So that's the main reason. So, but he's been traded now and he's saying he can play. Mm. Okay. I mean, you say you can play. (laughs) (laughs) So Otto comes and then like, Moody for sure ain't seeing nothing now because like he's barely seeing him anyway. So mm. I mean, it's like if you're not gonna play him, I prefer you give them an bring in someone that you know that you well, are. Well, I prefer play. that too because I know that Steve Kerr will lean into that. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, it's like I rather it be you leaning into Otto than leaning into Dario or like something else. Because oh, yeah. I feel yeah. like you you may not see Moody, but I feel like you also basically don't see Dario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I don't feel know like what his not contract Dario is anymore. If 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 who? Otto, if Otto. Back. yeah. So you don't know who Otto what Otto's contract. Otto, is. yeah, because I thought he signed a big number to go to Toronto. So like he's bought out or something like that. He's bought out, so it's like. Did I? I don't think a buyout oh, so it, happened yet. Or did it? Oh, like he would be. That's what I'm saying. Right, he yeah, would he be would bought be out, but they wouldn't be signed like a, a contract. This yeah. is buyout. Oh, okay. So this is not. Um, I mean, I think they should go after him regardless. And even if he comes and he can't do anything, then he's just someone on the bench pointing out things. It's it's to me, it's low <laughs> risk, high reward. You have sure. a 15th spot. It's a buyout. And he's someone who knows the system. Yeah. So wait, Toronto bought him out or no, Toronto traded Utah. Traded him to Utah. And Utah right. has sent him home. He's not playing. He's not doing anything in Utah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like he's just there, traded, and not playing. He's home. Right. So the Warriors would, would buy him out. He would get a buyout right. with Utah, and then the Warriors would sign him. Mm-hmm. Okay. That that's that's where I was missing because I was like, you know, we we only have that threshold of a buyout. So that's why when you, I was like, wait, did yeah, he get I bought mean, out? Yeah, trade you anyone now or... anyway because trade season's mm-hmm. over. So the only anybody coming now would be a buyout. Anyone. Right, but you see what I'm saying, what the contract amount is. Yeah, but the buyout is never for their contract amount because the other team is paying part of it, right? Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, what is his buyout number? It's Mm going to be negotiated. Because we would still have to eat some. Right, but that's something. No, I mean, I think that would be, yeah, they would just take care of that. Yeah, you negotiate that. Yeah. Buyouts yeah, are not usually like expensive. I'm not aware of like buyouts ever really being. Right, but yeah, but there's some people who would be on the buyout market that we couldn't touch because there was too much on their contract. That's what that's why I was saying. That's why there's yeah, a limited sure. amount of people. Well, it's not that, that we can't we touch them. Target. It's really about how much the player is willing to sign for and give up, right? Mm-hmm. It's all negotiated. So I don't think there's anyone you can't get. It's just most players aren't going to give up that money. Right. 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 But Otto doesn't have some big contract. It was like, I think, five or $6,000 per year, right? Wasn't it something like that? Yeah. yeah. Like millions and something like that. Yeah, I was like. Yeah, wait. I would. <laughs> I'd grab him too. Oh, did I, I say thousand? Yeah, I'm a yeah. million. Yeah, it's not. He doesn't have like some big contract. Yeah, I would grab. I just thought when he and this is the second year, right? And most of the season is over anyway. There's not a lot Mm -hmm. of season left because it was a two year deal, wasn't it? Or did they do a three year deal with him? Pretty sure it was a two year deal. Two year deal and like more than more than half the season's over. Mm -hmm. If they're gonna do it, they have to do it by March one. So we'll know sooner or later. That's only one, two, three, four. It's four more days. Four or five more days. Yeah, he makes six point three mil. Oh, okay, he fits perfect. <laughs> yeah. So and it's already going to be going into March. So you're just really talking about a month and a half, and then postseason, which is perfect. If he's in shape, yeah. he ain't been playing all season. He don't got the wear and tear of the season on his legs. Exactly. A little, little boost, you know, kind of like what Gary was supposed to be. Well, Gary kind of was when he was acquired. At the deadline last year, we didn't get him until it was buyout season anyway. We didn't get him available, at least. Right. And he helped. And he's, you know, Otto, like we said, we, he knows the system. Um, They love Otto. You know, you yeah. know the type of player you're getting. Hopefully, I mean, if he's healthy, he's a hell of a player. So, like you said, low risk, high reward if it pays off. Right. Like, I don't think 
like in Toronto, it was ever like this guy sucks. It was like this guy's not never available, right? Like he did so well with the Warriors, they took a chance on him and he couldn't stay healthy. And that's what I always said. Like, I mean, look, I know he's gonna take the money. And I think also it was something about like his his partners his from wife, that wife. area. Yeah. But that was the whole thing. I always said, like, I just I don't think another team can maintain Otto. And what I mean by that is, like, at least that year, the Warriors, there was a plan to maintain him. Like, they went into it knowing he's not going to play. There's going to, right? Like, and they felt like they could sustain that. But when someone else is now signing him, even if it's at a mid-level, that means they want to use you more. They're not, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his body hasn't proven to just to hold up, you know? So, at this point, if you're taking him, you're talking about a month and a half and then the postseason. They probably still don't play him on back-to-backs. Right. Celebrating and, a little bit. Yeah. And they probably limit his minutes. Like, he's, what, not seeing more than, like, 15 minutes? Right. 20 minutes, maybe. Definitely not 20, I don't think. Unless As the really postseason can. goes on. True. Maybe. Yeah. Doesn't he play more like in a matchup with Denver? You don't you think? Yeah, for sure. Uh, right. any, any of the bigger teams, yeah. Yeah. So I grab him. I would grab him. I mean, I haven't heard anything about it, but to me, it just makes too much sense. Yeah, I think he's yeah, he's definitely gonna get bought out. Because I mean, what else is he just doing? He's just sitting there. Right. right. And, well, and they were, matter, and he's super not, friendly. Had something left, right. Yeah. They were super chummy when uh, they went out to Utah. So, <laughs> yeah, like to me, it's a no-brainer. I don't see how it's a not Golden State. Like he already, he's still chummy with them. Yeah, he knows the system. Mm -hmm. He's already won with them before. Like, I don't even think he wanted to ever leave. Right. It's it just, just they like couldn't. Right. He was super excited to come to Golden State. It didn't take like a lot of convincing he was like oh it's golden state mm -hmm. you know he knew he wanted to rehab his career but he was like remember that came as a surprise no one knew it was going to be auto it was like they signed him people were like oh you know and then people were like i remember people clowning the move because they're like oh you guys just signed out of porter like but he ended up working out for us mm -hmm. right because they got him through the season but it was there was this like yeah he hasn't been good and because he's been injured <laughs> that's always the thing like when he can play he's good right really good championship right. player so you just get limited use out of him so i i think they should do it you know from everything it sounds like it would not cost the warriors a lot of money mm -hmm. so i hope no they do it i hope they do it if if he were to come what would that mean for for them though in terms of their lineups we already know who probably wouldn't be playing but um i think that would be probably no dario minutes at that point right um probably no loon minutes at that point he'll probably just eat into all the bigs so probably no trace minutes or less trace minutes for sure and unfortunately depending on you know, how he's playing, like it would probably mean less JK minutes too, just to be honest. You think so? Yeah. I think a, a night like tonight, he probably would have took some of JK's minutes because JK wasn't rebounding very well um, for the majority of the game. So, yeah. So you, so you think then if he comes, Kerr looks at it as like Dre and him are the two bigs? I think depending on how the game is going, he could just be like, yo, we need someone that's going to like do the big things like rebound, guard inside and stuff like that. And then if he has a third big, he's going to go loon instead of trace. I don't know. Probably he shouldn't, but probably. He kind of closed with the uh, trace a little bit tonight too. It was trace and Draymond. Yeah. In there. A little bit. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, hmm, okay. Getting a little look see at that one. <laughs> well, you like you said, Justin, 
got to throw him out there. Got to throw him out there. He, he was out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So they're about to embark on a road trip. They got Washington, New York, Toronto, Boston. So they got four games on the road before they come back home for three games. And there's a back-to-back -back when they come back home for three games. They have two back-to-backs in March. One at home and the other on the road. It's Miami-Orlando. I feel like it's always Miami-Orlando. Isn't that like an mm -hmm. every-year thing? Probably. I think they do that for all teams because... Which sucks. Team. I mean, look, both teams are good, but Orlando's good. And to have them on the second night of a back-to-back... -back, <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a geography thing. They just, you know, do it that way. Mm hmm It's like, uh, well, the Knicks and Raptors are back to back. Um, that's technically March. It's like the last day of February, last first day of March. They have two back to backs in April too. They'd be all right to close out that season. I mean. Look, they're going to be playing hard because they're definitely going to be jockeying for position at that time. But and this road this road trip is important. So, so what do you think about this road trip, guys? I mean, they got like I said, they have Washington, New York, Toronto, Boston. So I feel like two real teams and two like not. They need to go three but, and one. Listen, they need to go three and one. They really do. New York is going to be tough. They're going Honestly. to play that tough defense, even with, you know. Yeah, but their defense out. definitely is not as good without o, um, OG and um, Randall out. Yeah. But yeah, but they still been playing tough in winning games. <laughs> and you know, any chance? Yeah, I feel like they, they've yeah. lost more of their games now since those guys have been out they haven't been winning at the same rate the same clip so right they, i mean yeah. they can't but this i mean it could be tough just because it's like yeah they've been losing a lot but um that the that back to back MSG, though it's that msg and the, the i mean the back to back with toronto that's mm -hmm. the one where it's like okay like you should beat the wizards you should beat the depleted knicks but then you have a back to back against toronto who's just, you know, a younger team, whatever. They also destroyed them earlier this season. So they kind of owe them, but that can be a tough game. And then obviously the Celtics at home is going to be a tough game as well. Yeah. So. Got to get your licks in early. Yeah. Try to. Three try to one would be wizard. excellent, but I think I'd be okay with two and two. I want three and one. I should. I want yeah, three. listen. But right. they, did, they needed to be Denver. They didn't. And if they're going to yeah. rest staff, you know, mm -hmm. they again, that's be speculation. Washington. That's yeah. speculation. But if they're going to rest staff, that would be the game to do it for sure, because you're not going to rest him going into MSG. That's just not going to happen. I'm sure that's going to be a prime time uh, joint anyway. So. Mm -hmm. well, you know, but he often too his thing is resting people on the second night of a back to back, which is why I'm wondering if it might be Toronto before they play Boston. Because if you play Toronto on the second night of a back to back and then you only have one night of rest to go into Boston, then it's just like, I mean, I feel like they're going to get up for Boston anyway. It's a TV game, but you know, yeah. it's also Boston in Boston. So, right. So, I just, I don't know. I feel like Toronto's definitely – I think the Wizards is the best game to, to rest him for, mm -hmm. but I think you know how they are with second nights of back-to-backs. Right. So, you got to beat the, it, the Wizards <laughs> and the Knicks bad so you can get some rest then. You know, like you can always get in-game rest and then okay. see where you go from there. But who knows? Okay. All right. Well, really quickly, tell me, do we guys, how are we still feeling? They are going to finish top six. They did a lot of talking about it after the break coming in. They want to get to five. They want to get to six. They think like everybody was talking about it. It wasn't just like one player. 
Do you guys think they're going to get that top six? I think they do. I think they do. I mean, if they won this game, you feel even just that much more confident. But the fact that everyone else, but how everybody else lost tonight, it's just everybody else losing tonight. You want to be the one that wins it. So you still take that jump and, you know, just get in there. Sure, but, but that's it's, their goal. It's a, it's a that's one their goal. Jump. It's not. It's, but it's still a jump. Opposed yeah, but they still have less. Still where we're at. They still have less losses than the Lakers. So I already consider them ahead of the Lakers. I know other people don't, but like they have less losses. So yeah. Um, I just want to know if we think, though, they're still getting into the top six. Like, I, like they're going to lose games at some point. So I'd rather right. it be to a team like Denver versus a team that, they should they win, should. you know. Yeah. So it's just like we like they're not going to win all the rest of their game. So this is a game they lost. So what do you think? Still top six, Justin? I think it's definitely doable. Um, I think the Pelicans are going to start losing some games because they got some tough teams coming up. I the, got a lot of suspensions. So <laughs> yeah. the Suns, I'm not sure if they're going to drop that low. But if it, if if there's a team that's going to let. Golden State in it's the Pelicans and I think I think they I think they'll get them. Yeah, well there you have it, guys. Listen, thank you for tuning in with us as always. Vibe check quickly. I'm at a seven. Six. I was gonna say seven too. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Six. This is a little little low vibrations today, but me and Cream are at seven, which is not bad. I think not bad. Well, thank you for tuning in with us, guys. You know the drill. Make sure you're following us on Twitter and Instagram at Golden Spaces Pod. Make sure you're leaving us a five-star review. Make sure, or rating rather, make sure you're leaving us a positive review. Make sure you were sharing with a friend. And we appreciate the support. Until next time, take care, y'all.